Welcome to SpyKey, the MATLAB-based graphical user interface for monitoring spike train synchrony. SpyKey is designed to be applied to simulated uh, or experimental recorded neuronal spike trains, but in principle it can be applied to any kind of discrete data. It is based on the ISI and the spike distance, two recently proposed methods to measure spike train dissimilarity, which are both time resolved and parameter free. But if you want more information on these methods, please, re please refer to, to our spiky download page. In this short movie, we'll give you an overview of the different functionalities and a few demonstrations of how to use the main features of spiky. As you can see, spiky consists of two windows, uh, the interface on the left and the figure window on the right. In this window, you will see the data and the results obtained. So we'll start with a few quick explanations on a result figure and then proceed to show you how this figure was obtained. So here on top you see a raster plot of, in this case, 40 spike trains divided in four spike train groups, so 10 spike trains each. On the x-axis there's time. Below the raster plot you see the time result dissimilarity profile of the spike distance for both full population and the individual spike train groups. Note that these are the similarity measures, so low values mean high similarity. While the overall level of spike train synchrony is rather constant, you can see the individual profiles show a few intervals in which there was considerably more randomness. Then we have the pairwise spike train dissimilarity, which can be visualized best by color-coded matrices. Okay. And for the selected time instant, you clearly can distinguish two clusters of, uh, of 20 spike trains each. Finally, we recognize the spike train group matrices and dendrograms. dendrograms yeah. In order to work with spikey, you need data. So we start with a quick introduction to through the three different ways of getting them and therefore we bring spiky back to its initial status by pressing the reset button. The first option is to load data from a file which can be either in TXT or MAT format. For the latter there are three different variable formats. Spike includes an example file for all of them and this time we load the spiky stored as you can see in the cell array CA. Okay, to show you the second option, we are set again. This time we generate the data ourselves, ourselves using the spike train generator. Okay, and after setting the fundamental parameters such as number of spike trains and time interval, you can either use uh, predefined patterns such as Poisson and for a certain time interval, for example, or you can just add them, you can just add specs manually. You can also do all kinds of modifications such as drag and drop, copy and paste, and so on, and so on. Okay, so after accepting the spike trains, you can now start to work with them. But in order to show you the functionalities of spike, you will now rather use one of the predefined examples from the list box. In this case, the same cluster data already used in a 2013 spike distance paper. To confirm some predefined data parameters such as time markers and the division into four spy train groups, we press the update button. Now we can select the measures and here we just choose the spike distance as the most usable one. And we also confirm some pre-select time instant and averages and then we calculate the measure. And first we press plot to have a look at the similarity profile and the similarity matrix for the first time instant. And now we first add the individual profile for each group as well as group matrices and the dendrograms. Okay, to see the updated figure, please press plot again. Finally, we show you how to play a movie by which we mean a sequence of results for the individual time instant and the selective and triggered averages selected here. So now you can stop the movie whenever, jump to the last frame or the first, or just move freely as you wish. Uh, also you could change direction or the speed. And also by the way you can uh, change the appearance of the individual elements of the figure 
or all elements of a certain kind. This was for a font and the same can be done for graphical elements such as lines. Okay, so this was meant to be a general introduction. Soon you will find more videos with illustrations regarding some of the more specific features of Spiky. Cheers.